Hello and welcome to The Weekly Yes, a podcast where two best friends talk about their joint mission to say yes to life. I am your host, Yara Skakfjord, and co-host is my bestie, the amazing Kristen Guerin. On today's episode, we talk about some of the things that drain our energy. Yara coins a new term called the panel of guilt, and we discover and talk about what saying yes can teach us about commitment. I'll start you off with one fast fact that might be helpful for today's episode and beyond, and that is what Kristen and I often refer to as our system, or rather, my system, your system, etc. This is from one of our acting teacher's vocabulary. His name is Ken Schatz and is absolutely brilliant. And from my understanding, essentially refers to your personal operating system, much like a computer. Each person's system is different, and it essentially encompasses your body, your energy field, your expression, etc. It's a way of talking about yourself without necessarily identifying with what's happening to you or internalizing it too much, i.e. a computer is not the same thing as its operating system. I imagine you will hear us say my system or your system quite a lot on this podcast. And without further ado, I'm going to drop you straight into one of our conversations. Enjoy. So we went glamping, Yadin and I, this weekend, and I was thinking about my parents that would take us to cabins and stuff all the time. I'm like, you're just moving the house from one place (laughs) to another place. You're just doing exactly the same thing that you would do at home. Cook food, take care of the kids, or do the exact same things. You're just in a different, slightly different environment. I'm like, I've never understood this. Never in my life have I understood why people want to do this. I understand if you want to do this in a different country. You want to go to like Italy or something and be like in the Italian countryside and eat different foods or like whatever. You're somewhere where there's different weather, but you're like, I'm just going to go from where I live right now to one hour or two away to do the exact same thing that I would do in my home. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I agree with you. Anyway, what was your yes this week? Um... So last week I had said I would, um, I I said I'd take my artistic recovery seriously. And then I also said I would um, ask for help in the form of inviting other people to say yes. So giving other people the opportunity to say yes as well. Um, That is so hard for me. I feel like this is a major theme in my life is I just really struggle. I'm so much better than I was, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago. but I really do struggle with asking for help. Uh, and so this was a major victory this week to really be able to do that. Um, I wound up writing a proposal for this theater piece I'm creating. And I was really proud of it. I, it was, it, it took, it was, it's funny. So I'd had this intuitive hit a week and a half ago or so being like, you should reach out to this one person, this old friend of yours. Um, he runs this theater in Brooklyn now and reach out to him and see if, you know, you want to, uh, he wants to partner on this thing, right? And I, I heard the hit, but I didn't do anything with it. And then a few days later, this is a very distinct person. Like he looks like a giant Santa Claus. He just, he has a very <laughs> distinct look. There are very few people in this world who look like this person. And I'm at my office the other day, my office space. And this man walks by me and it looks like him. And I said, that's nuts. Like, how I said it has to be him. It has to be him. He looked identical, perfect doppelganger. And I followed him down the hall because I was like, I'm convinced it's this person. I haven't seen this person in a couple of years. I'm convinced it's this person. I kept fo- I followed him all the way into the elevator. <laughs> Spoiler, it was not Santa. But I followed him all the way down the elevator. And then I was like, I have to like, like, I gotta go back up. Like I'm not going out, you know? Anyway, um, I took it as a as a sign that I really should reach out to this person. So I did. And um and he was like, absolutely, just send me a proposal. And so I did. And I was really proud of myself. There was a lot of resistance to starting the thing, starting the proposal. And I was reflecting on that and how how that dedication is so important. Like that, that stick to itness of being like, I said I was going to do this and I'm going to do it. And I think there's so much nuance there in following your intuition and following like intuition versus resistance, right? Mm-hmm. And they sometimes feel similar. And so you're like, oh, is this, am I just, should I just not be doing this? And you're like, well, 
or is it just resistance or fear coming up? That was my biggie. How about you? Before I say what my yes was, it, it's just so because you're talking about intuition versus fear. And I actually think that this experiment of of saying yes is super helpful in sort of figuring that out, like gauging what that is. Um, I I read this book. Uh, it's a very famous book called The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember much from it. I, I read it many, many years ago. But one of the things I remember is that he talks about in the book that you ha must learn how to read the omens, mm -hmm. right? So you're essentially learning how to see the signs that the universe is giving you and be aware and conscious to the synchronicities that are, that are occurring. It's essentially just like one way to be like how to be more aware in the, mm -hmm. in the world, um, which is, I think, what this is as well. You know, just like saying yes to things, because when you are like, well, well, I said that I would say I have to say yes to everything. So then sort of like something turns on. I feel like that you're like there's like a different lens or different set of glasses that, that comes up, which I think is really helpful to sort of like cut through the fear. So you start to notice like, OK, so what is fear as in a big red warning? Like definitely do not go down this dark alleyway <laughs> or. um fear, resistance, what is on the other side of it is going to be something absolutely incredible. It's going to help me expand and grow in, in ways that I didn't even know. So I think the whole thing of, of saying yes is super helpful because it's sort of like, is more of an active, I think sometimes in the moment, it's hard to like, okay, yes, let's go inward. Mm, let's see how this feeling is feeling and where it's resonating in my body. I think that's a really hard thing to gauge right at the beginning. Yeah. So having something more active, like like saying yes, or like we said in the first episode, following the excitement is, is really helpful. And sometimes fear, we we confuse excitement for, for fear and resistance. Yeah. It's like, oh, is it fear or is it just my system being like really activated because this is exciting? So I, what, what I said last week is that I would say yes without guilt. Uh, and I think that shows up in various ways. Last week I spoke about how, it shows up um, with guilt so to other people in the world at large, feeling guilty that you have a good life and there are people elsewhere in the world that don't, or you are in a mindset of, of optimism and saying yes, and your partner is going through something. So like saying yes to things can trigger feelings of guilt. But I think it's showing up in other ways too, because the guilt for me, it's so deep, like the guilt and, and shame parts are so deep that sometimes it's just uh, uh <laughs> just like guilt towards myself or like my inner critic. I don't know how to explain mm. this. So I think it's like, okay, so for example, like something comes up, oh, I, I have to say yes to this. And all of a sudden I feel guilty about like my time. You know, it's mm -hmm. like this, the, these, um, these voices of should that come mm. up, these voices of that's not a good use of my time. That's not very productive. That's not what you should be doing. Oh, you're too old yeah. to, to do this or you're too young to do this or whatever. So it's like, it's, it's weird. It's like, I don't know if guilt is necessarily the right word, but that's the only quality that I can think of right now. Just like all of the voices, like all of the mm -hmm. judges, almost, if you will, <laughs> sort of like this panel, this panel of judges of your, the voices that reside inside your head. Some of them are your parents. Some of them are your own. Some of them are society, all of these things. So how can you say yes, regardless of this? panel yeah i'm just gonna call them the panel of guilt that's what, <laughs> that's what i'm gonna call them <laughs> i created a new concept i need to tr trademark this like what is the who is on this panel of guilt i was talking to a friend the other day and um i had this realization where something i've been struggling with this week was um identifying where in my life i'm saying yes to things to avoid saying yes to harder things. Um, so where am I saying yes as a way of saying no, actually? Um, and I, I reflected this to my friend and he said, you know, you're, it's, it's not just that when you say yes to something, you say no to something else. He's like, when you say yes to something, you say no to everything else. And I was like, whoa, what did you just say? <laughs> and Interesting. He paraphrased this um, this quote, uh, wait, I'm I'm butchering his paraphrasing. So this is like <laughs> it's like thrice <laughs> over three yeah. rounds of butchering. Oh, and I don't even know where it's from. This meat but, is um... processed. <laughs> processed meat. 
but it's that, um, you know, there was this CEO, tech CEO person who was saying, you know, we thought we were, if we were Facebook, that we're competing with Instagram and Twitter and we're competing with all the social media companies. He's like, but we realized we're not just competing with the social media companies. We're competing with everybody because if you're watching Netflix, then you're not on Facebook. If you're, you know what I mean? Like if your energy is elsewhere, if you're reading a book, then you're not on Facebook. And I think that it's so true. Your your time and your energy is so limited. I felt like for a while, I felt like I was pouring, like I would be putting all this energy into, you know, this cup, but the cup had a hole in it. And so I was like, I, the, all that energy was being lost and I wasn't mm. reciprocating. The, the it fountain, wasn't holding fountain. the, yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't like doing I was this job. I was very dry, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and I realized this, you know, it's not, it's not reciprocating. And um, this area of my life that I was just putting a lot of energy into, I was like, what if I were to shift that? What if I were to just try to channel that energy elsewhere? And immediately the amount of, first off, how much I got done in a few days, like the amount of, and the, and the amount of enthusiasm I had for life that I was just, I felt like I had so much life force energy within me. And to be honest, the reason I wasn't doing it was because it was scary. Like it was an area of my life where it's like, well, it's scary to be this vulnerable and this open. It's, you know, my creative career and, and work. And uh, and it's and that's a really scary thing. And it's like, well, you were avoiding it for a reason. I like that you're talking about this because I think it's important now for this next stage, I think, in our little yes journey. So at first you're kind of just like, OK, saying yes to everything yeah. and like and trying everything out. And now it's like, OK getting a little bit more specific about what you're saying yes to when we're talking about resistance and now that you chose to say yes to something completely different you are now filled with life force energy versus you know going back to the uh the panel of guilt oh like what what should i do what do you think is the best way for me yeah. to, <laughs> you know what do i oh the way to do this experiment this is how we do this experiment we say yes to everything or you can just choose whatever you want to say yes to and the yes that brings you the most yeah, I force a tiny little yes that I said yes to this week because I'm I'm saying yes to you know almost everything, and there was like a, a free reading of a play, and I'm like great I'm gonna go and I like went on online and I'm like it's free like there's no reason for me to say no. But then the reading was happening the same day we came back from this trip, and we were both exhausted because we hadn't slept much on the trip because our dog was freaking out about all the deer in the, in the woods. And the time passes. I'm like, okay, the, this reading is happening at eight o'clock. I'm going to go. I said I was going to say yes. I should definitely go. It's free. You should go. Like it's a play reading. There might be people there that you might, you know what I mean? So it stopped being about the, yeah. the joy of saying yes. And because it's feeding me with a life force and it became a should. It became yeah. a guilt. And then I, I showed up at the at the reading and like not seeing any p other people going into the venue and I'm like oh I must be like late and I was like I was three minutes late it was like 803 I arrived and the reading had started already and I'm like oh my god like they, they really started on time huh and then I realized and then I'm like watching the play and I'm like you know really getting into it and then 30 minutes later the play ends and I was like wait what it was only a 30 minute play that's so odd and then I realized way later, I was so exhausted that it didn't even occur to me that I had completely gotten the time wrong. The whole thing started <laughs> at seven. So I, I essentially missed the whole thing. And then I left and I was like, hmm, like earlier this evening, I just wanted to stay home. I was exhausted and mm -hmm. I wanted to stay home. But I felt like, like it became an obligation. Yeah. And actually, subconsciously, I had already decided not to show up because clearly I didn't show up. I showed up an hour later. Yeah, Shut up that's an hour true. Late to a reading. So I was, I didn't even actually show up to the thing. So I think there's definitely something now happening for both of us as like mm -hmm. maybe being a little bit more particular about what you say yes to. Yeah. So that you're not just draining your energy because then like, I, I, and, and it was like a little stressful because like the, the venue was in a place that was a little sketchy and I was by myself and it was dark. So I was like, I was like tensing up and I was on the phone with my husband, mm -hmm. just like, hey, can you just be on the phone with him? Like, so it, it became like a thing that that drained me instead of something yeah. that that I was yeah. hoping would feed me. But it just drained me this time yeah. around. I was reflecting on this thing from Kabbalah class a few weeks ago. He had talked about big ego versus small ego and how our small ego was doing things in the moment for instant gratification because we think we should because we because other people tell us we should 
So it's that, that moment of, I want you to approve of me, or I want to be seen as somebody who does a thing or, you know, like yep. that, that's a, that, that immediate gratification. So like five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now, a week from now, as opposed to big ego, which is an entrepreneur saying, I know that my product is great and I have faith in it. And I know that it, it deserves to be out there in the world and I am going to fight for it to succeed, right? That's big ego. Knowing that you have something to offer the world and not being deterred by the momentary being shot down, being, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, rejected, doing something, saying no to something because you're like, I'm exhausted or whatever it might be, right? Yeah, and I was, I was thinking about that and thinking about how that's dedication. That's so much dedication yeah. and faith in oneself and faith in, I don't know, the divine for that matter, like trusting in absolute certainty in the universe. And it feels like that's what I want to say yes to. Do you know what I mean? I want to say yes to, yeah. to this big ego concept. I want to say yes to like my, what I'm meant to do on this earth. I'm, I'm, I want to say yes to like my life path as opposed to saying yes to the immediate things because they bring you some sort of contentment or validation approval. or yeah. approval. Yeah. If there's self-approval or, or external. And maybe this is my, what I'm going to do this week, perhaps. Um is saying I'm going to stick with something like, like this is what I'm going to work on this week. This I'm going to do this. This is my goal. This is what I'm going to work on and sticking with it. Even when the resistance comes up and saying, it doesn't matter. I'm doing it anyway. Um, I just remember being a kid uh, going to ballet class. I was like maybe seven or eight. And I used to hate going to ballet because I mean, as a seven or eight year old, like you don't want to be wearing like tights and a leotard and everything's so, you know, constricting. And, um, and that was actually what I hated. I hated leaving the thing I was currently doing, which was probably like playing with my siblings or something and go getting in the car all alone, going to the place, having to get undressed in front of a bunch of other, you know, small girls, <laughs> get my, get, go, so get, and it's cold. I lived in Connecticut. It's very cold in the winter. <laughs> get undressed in the cold, put on, you know, this tight outfit, um, go into the cold room. I didn't want, I didn't want any of that, right? Like the it was almost like there was like a little mountain that I had to get over. But on the other side of the mountain, I had so much fun. I used to love ballet. I, I loved dancing and I loved the class. And I'd leave the class, you know, with more life force energy, with more like I just was on cloud nine. I had the best time. But it was getting over that little hump, that little mountain to get to that sort of oasis. I'm looking at a picture right now. It's so funny that I just pulled off my wall that is essentially an oasis. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and it's, and that's what it felt like. Right. And, and I think there's something there about being past and through. I used to have to trick myself. So seven or eight, and I used to have to say to myself, this is such a brilliant thing for a child to do, by the way, like tap little Kristen, little baby Kristen on the back for this. I used to say every time I, you know, I'm, okay, Kristen, it's time for ballet. I have to be like, just remember, Kristen, you really like it here. Once you get there, you like it. I had to, I had to convince myself and trick myself. Um, wow, and, to, and you did that for yourself. It's not like I your had mom to do that. Was, no. Oh wow. I don't know that I ever even expressed to my mom that I didn't enjoy the. Uh, I, I think it was just something that like I was doing. I was going to this class, and I, I had to convince myself. You you don't think you like it, but trust me, when you get there, you're gonna have a great time. And I still do that at 33 years old. I still do that constantly. Where I I mean this this happened this week where I I had projects I had to get done. I had work. I had to, I had to, I was studying for class. I'm in this class right now, and I was like, oh, I really don't want to study. Like I really, at the moment, I was like, I'd much rather just like sit here and watch The Office for the 5,000th time and like be cozy. I don't want to get my note cards out. And, start. and as soon as I did, I was so into it. I expected to do 30 minutes of studying. Seven hours later. <laughs> oh my, that's so extreme. I thought you were going to say like an hour, two later. No, seven it's, hours later. It was really cool. in, the, in, the, in that exact moment. It was like two and a half hours. But then I continued the next morning. But it was supposed to be like 20, 30 minutes was like two and a half hours. And I just had the best time. And I was like, oh, this was so empowering and fun. And I woke up the next morning. I said, I want to do more of that. I want to keep learning. I think there's also something here about getting over that hump to get to the oasis. I had this therapist once who I, I used to, I really struggle with decision making, Pisces. Pisces are notorious for not being great at decision making. And I'm one of those people. And um, and I said to the therapist, like, I just, I just can't, I don't know how to make decisions. How do you, how does one make decisions? And she was like, I think you're probably better than you think you are. Like, let's talk this there. Like, okay. Um, and she said, um, okay, if you're choosing between a, a few things, like you're able to cut out what you don't want, right? Like you know you don't want 
we're, we're choosing a, a pair of leggings. You know you want black leggings and you know you want them to be high-waisted and you know that you want them to go down to your ankle, right? You don't like the Capri leggings. It was like, that's like, okay, we just cut out so many leggings. <laughs> now we're down to like maybe like five options, right? Like you can get them from Lululemon. You can get them from Adlita. You can get them from Fabletics. You can get them from Amazon, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and she was like, this point, there's actually not too much of a difference. Yeah. Like at this point, you know what I mean? Like you've narrowed it down. You're, you know, you're not going to wind up with hot pink leggings that, you know, are go up to your, your calf or whatever, right? Like, you know, you're getting what you want. And this is, this is actually what I struggle with is this like last part of like, I just have the three or four options left. What do I do? And what she had said, which I really appreciated was like, well, what if your nose, what if you tried something out and it failed? So you went to this thing um, and you pushed yourself and you said, I, you know, you went to this, this, this play reading and you were like, I, I didn't like doing that. Right. And it's instead of being like, mm, I failed, I did, I, I should have just stayed home instead of like, what's the word you use? Like when you like, like whipping yourself, like self, it's like a self thing. flagellation. Self flagellation. Thank you. Very Catholic mentality. Flagellation. <laughs> In front of the panel of guilt. Yeah. In front of the panel of guilt. Um, but yeah, what if, what if that wasn't thing? What if instead it was, it was a way of thinking of, okay, I just learned something. I just learned I don't like Lululemon leggings. And mm-hmm. instead of being like, damn, I spent like $100 on this, right? You say, great, I only spent $100. Now I know I'll never buy from this company again. Or, I, you know, I remember going to LA. Um, you know, I mean, we, we mentioned this the other day. Gata drove me to LA. Laura and I drove to LA. And I thought I was going to move there. I was convinced. I remember like being like, this, yeah. is, this is my this next, is this is where I go. This is it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I spent, you know, about two months there, a little over two months. And I came back. And I was like, I never want to go there. <laughs> I don't like that city at all. And instead of saying, oh, I, I made a mistake. I, I wasted two months. Or I did, you know, I should have just stayed in New York or whatever. I was like, no, I just learned something hugely valuable. And I learned it at age 31, 32. And I, de- and I don't have to ever learn that again. I know I'm done. We don't have to go back down that path. And you also gave yourself enough time to actually figure that out. It wasn't like, yeah, oh, I'm going to go to LA true. for a week and see if I like yeah. it or not. Like, no, like you were like, I'm going to commit. Well, like, I'm going. So I think there's just something here about, gosh, I just said so much. But I think uh, the biggest thing is, like, committing to a thing. So saying, dedicating yourself, being like, I'm committing to doing this thing. And I'm going to trust that whatever comes of it is of value, whether it's me loving the experience and getting a lot of, like, force energy out of it, or whether or, or it's me learning what I don't want to do moving forward. Like, either way, it's of value. Yeah. I think it's important. Exactly. To have those experiences because like more time and energy would have been wasted in you thinking about it and imagining yes. it and like, oh, if I only would go to LA, then blah, blah, blah. You know, like who knows how much energy and time that would have wasted throughout your entire life. And, and you're just so like, true. let's just go and see what happens. And also, I just want to say the only reason I wound up in Tel Aviv was because I went to LA. Wait, I didn't expect to say that. But I went to L.A. and then I bumped into that or I like met up with that friend who I had like this online friend who I'd been very close with for like a year. Um, And she was like, I'm doing birthright this year. Do you want to do it? And I said, I thought I was too old. And she was like, no, like, you know, the the age had been extended. And and so I wound up going on birthright because of her. So, again, I mean, this just harks back, harkens back to like what we were just talking about the other week of you never know like where the thing is going to lead you. And you kind of, you know. Maybe it wasn't just a LA. I didn't just go to LA so that I know I don't want to live in LA. I also went to LA to find Tel Aviv. So what do you want to say yes to this week, this upcoming week? This week, I would like to commit to just for a week, just to try it out. I'm not a very, again, Pisces. We're not very committal people. (laughs) We go with the flow a lot and we follow you know how we feel and that's great in a lot of ways i'm not necessarily the best at follow through um or i'm not the best at follow through for, for a prolonged period of time um i do tend to kind of just follow the, my intuition and how i feel and if i still want to do this right which is wonderful but i think it also keeps me from a lot of opportunity and mm-hmm. it keeps me from um maybe growing things or growing, you know, in, in certain ways. There might be some resistance on that, but instead 
of giving into that resistance or powering through that resistance. I'm just going to hold space for it. Just allow it to be there. Like feeling, okay, I acknowledge you. I hear you. Thank you, resistance. You know, you're probably trying to keep me safe. So that's just one week of just committing to doing this thing, these things that I'm doing is this creative work every day um, and see how it feels on the other side. I like that that you're giving yourself a, a parameter because I think even though I'm like double earth, like I'm Capricorn and, and a Virgo rising, it, it can still be hard for me to commit. I think the, one of the reasons why it, it can be hard for me to commit and follow through is because I know that when I do so, it, it is so earthy. Like when I yeah. when I like something or, or, or someone or something, I can become like a little obsessed and it, it can become a lot. And sometimes it has had uh, not the best of consequences, <laughs> you know, right. or, or it keeps me then stuck in that area and then I can't move on to other things or try other things. So time parameters, I think, are really helpful because sometimes when I imagine myself committing to something, it's like a blood agreement. If I commit to something and then I decide I want to quit, then I don't know, <laughs> like something terrible would ha will happen, you know, or whatever. I was actually listening to a part of a podcast yesterday with Mike Birbiglia and Rami Youssef, two comedians and writers and, and um, actors, and they, they're like multi-hyphenate guys. Then Rami mentioned that he was in the middle of, or both of them are like writing a movie or something. Hmm. And they put away their... So they, they both got like a, a flip phone because they were like, if, if I am to finish this movie, I cannot have my phone. And they're not, and they're not like throwing it away. And now I'm only a flip phone guy. It's like, no, but when, when I am writing my movie, I'm only going to have my flip phone. Only five people have my number here. And one of the reasons why Rami said that he, he uh, did that is because his mom was sick for a while. And if he put his phone away, like he would come back to like 17 missed calls, you know, so there's just like a yeah. mini trauma there. So they're like, so, so how can I both be connected to the people that I love and not completely be absorbed in this yeah. creative project that I love and I want to do, but also this is important to me. My people are important to me. So I can put away the iPhone while I'm writing and have my flip phone. So I'm calming down this part of my brain that's like, oh, but I need to be reachable. What if this happens? What if there's an emergency? You have your emergency phone. I love that sort of like double recognizing that like if I am to put my energy into this creative project, this is my biggest distraction. Is this iPhone? Is this social media? Is people texting me constantly? About nothing. Like none of those things are emergencies. It's like I don't have to be reachable yeah. to buy paper towels. Like I, yeah. like I don't. You know, that's not an yeah. emergency. You know, it's, it's a nuisance for my wife if I come home and I miss the text about paper towels, but it's not an emergency, right? Yeah. If there's an emergency, someone is in the hospital or someone is dying or like whatever, something is happening, they can reach me on this flip phone by texting me or, or calling me. I just thought that was so brilliant. I was like, oh, that's such that. so good. You know, there's a thousand different things vying for our attention at any given moment. Um, and when we say yes to any one of those things, we're saying no to everything else. Well, how many things can we juggle? And I think that's also something I've been experiencing is like having said yes to a bunch of different things. I don't know that I want to say yes to everything. And I think it's clarifying for me, again, like each of these things saying yes to that date or saying yes to that um, event is making me be like, well, maybe that's not where I want my energy to go. And maybe that's, you know, um, so maybe those are no's right now. Yeah. And they can shift. Again, I love this thing of like, it's just while I'm writing the the book or the the movie or whatever, and then and then there's room for other things. Once that's gone, then suddenly it frees up more energy and more space. What's your uh, intention for the week? Yes for the week. My yes for the week. I so I have a lot of social things coming up, and I actually just realized this earlier this week. I moved to a new city two years ago, and it was it was very lonely for a while, and it took me a while to find people and build a community and and then last week I went to a friend's show all of a sudden I had so many people like in the lobby after the show that I said hi to I was like oh I need to say hi to this person oh that person oh and this person so it was like this weird moment of like, wait how do I know all of these people all of a sudden and Yadin looked at me like wow you know a lot of people tonight I was like yeah I had no idea <laughs> that came out of nowhere um so that was really nice. And that was just like, I think the first time that I was like, oh, cool. So like I live mm. in a place now that if I go to a place where there's a lot of people, I might know somebody. Yeah. That's a new level of existing in a place, like being in a community, living in a city. I was like, oh, that's so nice. So 
So next weekend, uh, Halloween weekend, I have three separate events that I'm going what? to. And none of them are with the same people. Wow. I'm like, this is three different groups of people that I'm meeting. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> I've already decided I'm going to go to all of them. Speaking of commitment, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and give up myself to these people. And I'm going to receive from this people and saying yes to being here. I'm going to I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be like, I am here. Yeah. And I'm going to be here and I'm going to stay here and I'm going to, you know, say yes to these invitations and, and be with the people and allow myself to be with the people. Yeah. So I think that's, that's what I, that's what I want to say yes to this week. It's interesting. Both of our things are about commitment. Yeah. That's of interest. Um, I also just want to say, you know, for you or for, you know, somebody who's listening, who needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. Also, just like having watched your journey, having moved to Atlanta, I think you needed time to to not have so a social life before you were now ready to have one. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, I think there was a lot of beauty from what I've watched you go through and a lot of transformation in the in the home, you yeah. know, in your relationship with yourself and your family and your, your home life. And and I think that was the beauty and the gift of those two years. Um, and it's probably, you're probably only now able to say yes to this because you sat in that for so long, because you said yes to that for so long. And I think I'm, you know, part of me saying I'm going to direct my energy elsewhere. It's like, well, maybe that's not the gift that I'm being given. This I know it's not the gift I'm being given in this moment. And perhaps it's, it's an opportunity for me to say, what is the gift I'm being given? What is the, what is the yes that I'm really being offered here? As opposed to the yes that I'm forcing, having absolute certainty that like, the friendships will come. The community will come when it comes. But for two years, it was like, this was just us time, just me time. This is very like home life time. And that's also, to be fair, something you don't get in New York City. True. <laughs> to be fair, you spent many years up here with no home life. None of us have a home life. We all, have, we all only have out lives. Um, yeah, it's so true. Yeah. And it's just, and it's so funny because it snuck up on me. Yeah. You know, it, I was like, oh, this exists now. Oh, I can, I can relax. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden it just, it just exists, you know? Um, but an another thing that happened that, that evening really took me back because, um, I did level one improv with, a, with these people, uh, earlier this year and a, a big chunk of them kept, kept going. Um, and now they were, uh, graduating from, from level five and, and I had decided like after level one, like I didn't have the best experience and I was like kind of resenting it a little bit, not the people, you know, just kind of like the class, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really sure if I liked it. So, but then I went on Tuesday night and I was like, I want to go, hmm. you know, like I, I want to keep going. I want to, speaking of commitment, like I want to, I want to keep doing this because I just, it took me back to when I was in New York and I decided to to try try out improv, I think I'm talking about this because it speaks to the resistance that we're talking about earlier. And it was this thing of like, I re like I this was the scariest thing that I could possibly imagine was to go to an improv class or to do improv. Right. And, and I'm and I'm going and I'm so terrified and it's like the scariest thing I've ever done. And I hated it so much. <laughs> so it's like I came home from two hours of class and I'll be like, oh, I hated it so much. I'm like, I was so uncomfortable. It was the worst thing ever. This was the worst. And then immediately after I'll be like, oh, I can't wait to go back. It was the weirdest feeling ever. I had never experienced anything like this, but I sucked so bad. I was so terrible at it. I didn't fully understand it. Every time I went up, like I just like, I felt so shitty. Um, and it was, it was just awkward and terrible and blah. And I hated it. And I couldn't wait to go back. So that's when I knew that, that I <laughs> had to keep going. I'm like, I don't know why I keep wanting to go because I really hate it, but I keep wanting to go. So I just kept going. So um, there was something about the, about the resistance, but the excitement mm -hmm. was still there. You know what I mean? The excitement kind of like was still there driving that rock, like the boulder. Yeah. The boulder had wheels. Right, right, right. So it was heavy, but I could, you know, but I could push it, you know? Also just like be reminded in that moment of like, it doesn't have to be the perfect class. Yes. Like, that's not the point. You know, yeah. the point was to, to grow and to meet people and to, and to just be in that community and to have fun. And like, you don't have to take it so seriously. But it was just like a moment of like, wow, like I really, I do like it here. I love improv. Um, I want to be a part of this community. 
so they also inspired me. So next year that. when they open classes again, I'm going to, I'm going to go again. Next year. Whoa. I know there's only two months left, baby. <laughs> I don't think I've ever called you baby ever. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> on that note good luck to both of us with yeah. this newfound spirit of commitment. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. That concludes this week's episode of The Weekly Yes. You will find us on all major podcast platforms as well as YouTube, and you can follow us on Instagram as well at The Weekly Yes. We encourage you to listen to your intuition and follow your instincts this week and perhaps ponder on what commitment means to you. And if you feel inspired to share with us what you said yes to, you can email us at theweeklyyes at gmail.com. Perhaps we'll feature your story in an upcoming episode. Keep saying yes, and we'll see you next week.